What's going on guys, your boy Coach Anthony. Of course, we got none other than Fast Eddie Chambers and we just wanted to go ahead and remind you, this is Black Friday week. This is the week of Black Friday. And I just wanted to let you guys know what we are offering. I am offering every single course on my website that we already dropped up to date, which is 15 courses. And actually, I'm gonna give you guys an extra course that we just made named Drillers Make Killers that isn't even released to the public yet. If you go ahead and grab the Master Boxing Bundle at 90% off, Eddie, 90% off. And not only that, I'm gonna give you guys a free coaching call so we can go ahead and discuss what your personal goals are, what you're trying to accomplish through boxing, and how I can help you further in the future. Over the years, I've made courses like Build You From The Ground on 1.0, Build you from the ground up 2.0, footwork drills, defensive principles 101, how to set traps and counter punch, angles and how to create them, 50 combos to the head, 50 combos to the body, 50 head body combinations, how to box on the inside, how to box from the outside, how to box the opposite stance, which is basically orthodox first southpaw, the complete Philly shell system, how to shadow box, heavy bag conditioning drills and of course like i mentioned before the last course that isn't even released yet drillers make killers guys this is a steal i've sold these courses at 300 dollars a pop and many have purchased them in the past and now you guys can get all of them at one time for 90 percent off with a coaching call guys this is an opportunity do not miss it go ahead go to the website don't hesitate you've been watching us on youtube for years we're here to help you we want to take your boxing to the next level let's go what's going on guys what's going on man how's everybody doing man it's been really dope man we're in episode 27 of no days off November. That means we've been on here 27 days straight, man, talking about different stuff, boxing related, different tips, boxing related. And I just wanted to get on here today. Yesterday was kind of dope. We actually talked about the fight. I watched the fight. I commented in the fight live yesterday with Regis Progrius and Jose Cepeda. If you guys didn't see that, check that out. That was pretty dope. All week we've been going crazy. Just having a good conversation, talking to everybody. Of course, as you guys seen, the Black Friday sale is still here. The Black Friday sale is still here, and I have extended it, obviously. I keep forgetting that Cyber Monday and Black Friday are literally two days you know, away from each other. I wonder why, like, I just can't remember that those two are connected. I guess because, you know what I'm saying, Black Friday is just so popular that, um, you know what I'm saying, I just... I just be forgetting. So guys, don't forget that you guys can go to the website, Coach Anthony Boxing, right? Boxing.com and get the Master Boxing Bundle uh, and get a free coaching call. It's kind of messed up though, man. I kind of just wanted to stream this live to my Facebook and my Facebook group and Facebook said that I violated the terms. I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did wrong. So unfortunately, I can't get my Facebook people in this particular one. I'm going to have to share this later. But um. Yeah, man, we're going to talk about some boxing stuff. We're going to talk about some boxing routines. First and foremost, I want to hear what you guys do for your boxing routine. So if you guys are in here and you guys work out with boxing, I would love to hear some of the things that you guys like to do. And then I would like to see if there's a way where maybe I can help you with your personal boxing, you know, routine maybe there's something you could do so if anybody wants to go in here and talk to me and tell me what they're doing currently for their boxing routine that'll be really helpful because then i can go ahead and pick it up you know and uh and try to pick up some of your stuff and try to adjust it right here live you know what i mean um yeah kyle i don't know what's going on champ but facebook actually blocked me from streaming this to facebook i really don't know what i did uh, I, I just don't know what I did. It just said you have been, uh, <laughs> you have violated the terms. I'm looking at it right now. You have violated the terms. I guess I violated terms by just sending this over to Facebook, man. I don't understand what I did. But anyway, guys, anybody who's in here right now, uh, and if you guys don't have a boxing routine and you guys want me to give you one, you know what I mean? That's something that I'm going to do eventually on this live. But I just wanted to hear what some of you guys are currently doing. Maybe Kyle can go ahead and share. Uh, Kyle, talk to me, man. What 
What's up, coach? On the night shift, so I'm able to catch this one live. Yeah, Kyle, why don't you type in the chat some of the stuff that you do right now for your boxing routine? What would be a typical boxing routine for you? I would love to hear it. While you're doing that, I'm going to try to get this on Facebook somehow so I can get more people in here. Okay, Kyle, I guess you ain't got nothing to say. I guess nobody's talking right now, man. What's going on, man? Hey, Coach, this live is a blessing. I've been out for a while in boxing, decided to come back training tomorrow, but it'll be a whole routine, a completely new, a home routine. Yeah, first, I would like to hear what some of you guys are doing, what some of you guys are doing currently, because maybe I can go ahead and just adjust it. I'm going to go ahead and put this link in there. Maybe you guys will feel more easier just telling me what you guys are doing right now. Facebook just got back to me. Let me just see something real quick. Mish Lish, what's going on, champ? Okay, so let's see here. We got skip rope for 10 minutes. Hip flexor stretch, knee lunge stretch, fine rhythm, shadow box 10 minutes, side to side, front to front 10 minutes, figure eight footwork 10 minutes, jab five minutes, double jab five minutes. Okay, some of that stuff I'm not exactly sure what it actually is. I'm not quite sure what you mean by the uh, figure eight footwork. Um, but it seems like you're doing everything for minutes. Let me ask you guys a question. Is is it flickering? Is my live flickering to you guys right now? I'm having some technical issues today. It's flickering, right? Give me a second, guys. What's going on, guys? Your boy, Coach Anthony. Of course, we got none other than Fast Eddie Chambers. And we just wanted to go ahead and remind you, this is Black Friday week. This is the week of Black Friday. And I just wanted to let you guys know what we are offering. I am offering every single course on my website that we already dropped up to date, which is 15 courses. And actually, I'm going to give you guys an extra course that we just made named Drillers Make Killers that isn't even released to the public yet. If you go ahead and grab the Master Boxing Bundle at 90% off, Eddie, 90% off. And not only that, I'm going to give you guys a free coaching call so we can go ahead and discuss what your personal goals are, what you're trying to accomplish through boxing, and how I can help you further in the future. Over the years, I've made courses like Build You From The Ground on 1.0, Build you from the ground up 2.0, footwork drills, defensive principles 101, how to set traps and counter punch, angles and how to create them, 50 combos to the head, 50 combos to the body, 50 head body combinations, how to box on the inside, how to box from the outside, how to box the opposite stance, which is basically orthodox 
first southpaw, the complete Philly shell system, how to shadow box, heavy bag conditioning drills, and of course, like I mentioned before, the last course that isn't even released yet, Drillers Make Killers. Guys, this is a steal. I've sold these courses at $300 a pop, and many have purchased them in the past. And now you guys can get all of them at one time for 90% off with a coaching call. Guys, this is an opportunity. Do not miss it. Go ahead. Go to the website. Don't hesitate. You've been watching us on YouTube for years. We're here to help you. We want to take your boxing to the next level. Let's go. All right, let's let's hope for some better luck, man. I've been having some real technical issues lately, guys. So bear with me with these particular technical issues. I don't know what's going on. I'm not the most techie guy, but I'm gonna have to look into some of this stuff. Um, so yeah, black. I mean, I think the skipping rope is good for ten minutes. Um, the the stretching is always fine. Now from dare, um. I just think it just depends on what skill set you are, but I would focus more on doing things for rounds more than minutes, Black. So if I was you, for me, well, here we go with the technical issues again. Give me one second, guys. Wow. Wow, 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 man. Looks like I'm going to have to use my FaceTime camera on this laptop due to the fact that I'm having technical issues, man. Um, I would focus more on rounds. I would focus more on rounds uh, than I would focus on um, minutes, if that makes sense. So I would maybe do like two or three rounds of one thing, two or three rounds of another thing in this situation. My boxing routine is really simple. I stretch first and do some shadow boxing. I run Monday to Friday five rounds without stopping, keeping movement consistent. So on a situation like yours, um, Running five miles every day is a bit excessive. I don't know if that's necessary, running five miles a day, every single day, Monday through Friday. Um, I keep it shit, but I stretch and do some shadow boxing. Where's the heavy bag work? Where's the, the, the heavy bag work, the mitt work, the sparring? What else are you doing besides just shadow boxing and running, champ? Kyle, I warm up three rounds, three minutes, shadow box, accessory bag, cobra bag, workout five rounds, two, three minutes each. Yeah, we're definitely going to fix that routine, Kyle, 100%. We're 100% going to fix that routine now that you're down with the 2.0 program. And I'm going to get you something real nice and solid that's going to help you on our next call for sure. Wow, you're a beast. I'm barely getting three miles every other day. Listen, you don't have to run five to ten miles a day or six miles a day. Like, this is unnecessary stuff, guys. Give me one second, all right? I got to get this technical issue uh, straightened out. It's frustrating me. Give me one second.
All right, let's try this again. Let's try this again. We always did circuit training, start with one mile, then 15 rounds, then five rounds of sparring, circuits include all bags, speed bag, water bag, then lunges. That's a hell of a, that's a hell of a routine you got there, uh, lunatic. Hey, coach, were we able to see the, the comment earlier? Let me take a look, Edgar. Yeah, I got. I'm dealing with something. Man. I don't know what's going on. The other day, my camera messed up. I went ahead and bought a few pieces that's supposed to fix it, and now tonight it's flickering. I, I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to make sure. So, guys, bear with me. I just kind of reset everything, and hopefully, it, it holds on this time. Let me take a look, Edgar. Let me ask you, man, who's willing to come on here and talk to me real quick? I think it would be much easier for me to kind of uh, adjust stuff if I can talk to somebody verbally and ask some person, you know, some ask some questions about routine. Um, and it'll give you guys, it'll give you guys a little bit more insight on how I would organize your routine. You don't have to show your face. I know guys are scared to show their face on here. So you guys just get on here and ask. But I think it'd be easier for me to adjust routines that way. Thirty warm up thirty minutes, ten minutes of rope, fifteen minutes of shadow boxing, heavy bag three to five rounds, speed bag three to five rounds, mid work three to five rounds, reaction and hand to eye. Pablo, that's a pretty good routine. I like it, man. I would probably the only thing I would change there is with the shadow boxing, I would probably focus on rounds as well. Um, but other than that, I mean, don't get me wrong, some days we might only do um minutes shadow boxing, but I like rounds. I feel like rounds is the best way to go uh, because when you do rounds in a lot of cases, don't get me wrong, we change it. Sometimes we go 30 minutes straight on some exercises. Sometimes we don't. But I like rounds because a fight is rounds, right? So I would probably just adjust everything by maybe doing six rounds of shadow boxing. It comes up to similar amount of minutes, you know what I'm saying? But at least you get that little break in between. And you guys got to understand, when you take that break in between, it's similar to a fight, right? Like the elevation of your heart rate goes up and it goes down and then it goes back up. So you got to remember that in a fight, it's not going to be like this, right? It's going to go like this, right? There's going to be moments of the fight where you're going to be going extremely hard, moments of the fight where it's going to taper down and then it's going to pick back up. And we want to emulate the training. We want the training to be very similar to that. So it's always good to kind of do intervals in your shadow boxing, heavy bag work, the mint work. All these intervals are, they happen naturally when you have a coach who's pushing you. Same thing with the heavy bag when you have a coach who's pushing you. Those intervals happen by default. Uh, but stopping at the end of a round and then having to pick back up is actually a good habit to get into because when you go back to the corner and you settle down and and then you got to get back up and get back to work, you want to kind of get that implemented in your training. I put the link right there in the chat, guys. So for anybody who has a problem or doesn't have a problem getting in here, get in here, man. Click that link, man. So far, so good. I mean, not jinx this uh camera but right now it's working again so hopefully all i had to do was do that little shut off and shut back on all i all you gotta do is click the link in the chat guys i'll put it in there one more time click it and guys what's cool about this chat right now is for you guys who are in here you guys can actually see some of the the, the other people's workouts, and maybe you guys can screenshot some of this stuff and keep it for yourself. You might like somebody else's routine, and you might want to steal somebody's routine. So there's a good opportunity for you guys to learn from each other, try each other's workouts, and see if you like them. You know what I mean? I'm just here to see where your guys' minds at and how I can help you guys make the program a little bit better.
When it comes to boxing routine and strength and conditioning and training, would it be best to do them separate days or or together? Um, I would. I think it's better to do them on separate days. So I would do my strength and well, it just depends if I'm running that day. You see what I'm saying? So like maybe on the day that I'm not running could be a strength and conditioning day. I would probably swap out. I would probably organize it where the sparring, the strength and conditioning, and the running are. Uh, program properly you know what i'm saying that would be my main thing when are we sparring when are we running what are we running right the running could be sprinting or the running could be miles right so there's just a little bit of variables i have to have complete context of what you're currently doing before i can give you a full answer but you definitely want to program it in a way where it doesn't interfere with your sparring and it doesn't interfere with your with your uh, boxing training and your running. So everything matters. I need to know how much you're running. I need to know when you're sparring, how many days a week you're sparring. What, you know what I mean? When you're boxing, do you have time to separate workouts in a day? There's a lot of little variables, if you see what I'm saying. Let me get Omar in here, and we can get back to that, Edgar. Omar, what's up, champ? What's going on with you, coach? Chilling, man. Talk to me. What you got? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What kind of routine you got going on? Um, yeah, I was the, I was the black swordsman. I just copy and pasted mine, like I said. Um, I'm hitting everything, like like I texted you about five minutes, except for my footwork. I, I try and get about ten to fifteen minutes of the footwork in there. And the figure eight is I I put the cones in the um um about I put I got a a, spe a reflex bag and I put that in the middle and it's about eight cones and I go in between them uh forwards and backwards, left and right like that. And uh, I do that for about 15 minutes um, uh, every other day. And um, on the days that I'm not training, I'm uh, doing strength and conditioning because I'm kind of scrawny. Um, and I just uh, lift weights on those days and, and run uh, three miles uh, every other day. And um, like I said, the I, but I took a note of what you said about the um, um, do going in rounds, going forward um, as far as uh, my jab, uh, and then I hit the first, double jab. First, first, let me ask you, Omar, how, yeah. how long have you been boxing? Um, I've been going strong for about three months now as far as taking it seriously and getting ready to go to a um, go to a gym in uh, about January. I'll be 22 and um, I'll be 22 in February. So I'm trying to go before my, my 22nd birthday. Now, let me ask you a question. Have you and, and I'm not trying to be a salesman, but have you ever checked out any of my courses? Like building um, from the ground up 1.0, build you from the ground up 2.0, like those beginner courses that can kind of give you a foundation. I've seen I've seen them online, but I, I just look at your personally, I just look at your your videos on YouTube all the time. Like I just I learned literally how to jab and everything from your videos. So um, but I would definitely check them out. Um I would definitely check them out. Well, this is my advice to you, because I and this is the reason why I asked you how long you've been boxing, and then you know you just mm -hmm. gave me some context where you said you haven't been in a gym, right? right? You're doing this on your own. You're learning on your own, right? So, if I was you, and this is this is all this is all fact, I would for one, I'd be focusing on the basics like working the jab on a line, mm -hmm. right? So, and build you from the ground up. We have the beginner stages where you you know you learn the jab, you step with the jab, you make sure your form and technique is right, all that stuff. And I would do something like that for like. Uh, let's just say three rounds, okay? Mm -hmm. And then maybe I might do like another three rounds where I do the one, two, right? And really hone in the form and the technique right. before I start moving around and doing figure eights and stuff like that. But again, right. I can't see you, so I don't know where you're at. But for instance, when people come to me and they train with me in real time, that's the kind of stuff I got them doing. So their shadow boxing is simply just the basics, right? Just getting the right. basics down, getting the form down, the boring stuff, the stuff that people don't want to do. That's the stuff I have people do. And then once they build and I see that their foundation is good, then we start working on lateral movement and right. you know, adding some defensive things in there and eventually add the angles and, and teach the, the mitt work and the counter punching and then eventually some drilling and then sparring, et cetera, et cetera. But as far as what you got going on, it sounds like you have a nice idea, um, but I would probably make sure that we don't skip like the boring work, if that makes right. sense. Right. Understood. Of course. Of course. Especially if you want to take this to a level of sparring. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, just something to consider. 
You know what I mean? So if you get a chance, check those out, man, because I really think that you might sure. be, you might be missing something in there that might really be a gem for you. Um, and maybe one day we can meet each other and I can actually see where you're at. You know what I mean? I would, whether, that's, whether that's virtually or in, in real life, but virtually I've been meeting people every day and I've been seeing how people are and I'm able to pick stuff in the moment with my Facebook community and stuff. I right. just think that, that, that I, I just feel like there's something I'm, I'm looking at your routine and I feel like we might be skipping something uh, fundamentally, especially since you've only been doing this three months. Mm -hmm. Understood uh, for sure. And I'm going to check out your course uh, right after you get done with this live. So, yeah, uh, I think build you from the ground up is where you need to be. Super beginner, right. super basic, because that listen, that that stuff applies for the rest of your career. You know, the mm -hmm. rest of your life, the fundamentals are going to apply. You know what I mean? Um but listen to this though, the 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 routine overall isn't bad. Let's just try to zero in and do rounds, right? So like, uh, whatever yeah. you're doing, just do three minutes on, and do one minute off, and then as soon as that's too easy, turn that one minute into thirty seconds uh, as a rest period. Okay. You know I mean? And do everything for rounds, you know. So try to get in twelve rounds of work in a day, or maybe even more depending if you're hitting speed bags and stuff of that nature right all right omar thank you for pulling I, in here bro thanks man i appreciate you so much take care my guy you too let me get my guy in here somebody who's been on here for, oh where'd you go oh there you go i can't hear you though can you hear me now there you go. I finally could put a face to the name, man. How's it doing, uh, Coach Anthony? Yes, I'm Justin, the lunatic living. Uh -oh. Fart. You keep, you, get, you keep getting kicked off, man. What's going on? I, I have no idea. Maybe it's my Wi-Fi. I don't know. I'm out of my garage. So, um, where, where yeah, you, when I was... Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm in Wisconsin. I'm in uh, kind of like central Wisconsin. Um, originally from Milwaukee. Uh, so, I mean, when I was going to the gym in Fond du Lac, um, and this was back a year ago, I was on the live stream when I got my ribs broken the day before veterans day during the sparring session. Um, but we would do one mile start at the gym and then we would do on to the rib getting broken. What happened there? Um, I went to throw a left hand. He can't, uh, cause I fight as a Southpaw went to throw a straight left. Came up underneath me, threw a uh, right hand directly to the rib cage. I had a previous injury there before. Uh, I got caught between um, a car and a trailer uh, that was getting winched in, and it cracked my ribs, and he just re-injured it. So, so he dropped. He you, he you threw a straight left hand. He dropped and ripped the right. It's uppercut. twenty-three hours. Correct. Got it. And it went right, like right, right between the heart. And the beginning of the rib cage, and he, he caught me right there. Did you feel it right when it happened, or did it take you to when you got home? Nope, I felt it. Ex and as soon as it happened, the rib cracked. And then as soon as I started to move again, you could feel the rib moving inside the rib cage. You got it. Okay, so continue. Uh, I actually went for another like two rounds after that, but you know, uh, it, it was it was probably dumb on my part. But we would do one mile run. And then our timer was set for 15 rounds. It was three minutes. And then with a 30 second rest period, we would do our circuit. Maybe it's three rounds of heavy bag, three rounds of uh, double end bag, then uh, three rounds on the speed bag. And then uh, we would do uh, a one minute circuit for uh, strength at the end of our routine every day at the gym. So, and, uh, you know, we would do kettlebells and then, um, those uh, steel bars and stuff like that for like rotating the wrist and, and, you were, and, you were, and, you were, and you were sparring the same day or this is on opposite days of sparring. No, it was on the same day. It, so it was all on the same day. Okay. So you would run. Yep. Do your boxing routine. Yep. And then spar. Yep. So that's an excessive amount of work before sparring. Yep. In my in my opinion, right? So like the way we like to do it is on the days that we on a day like that, I don't have a problem with the routine as far as the running and then hitting the the circuit 15 rounds. I'm cool with that. That's fine. But I would probably do that on the days that I'm not sparring 
And the days that we are sparring, we probably come in, get a nice warm up, get our body nice and warm. Focus on the sparring be the main work, right? Because we want to have our energy for sparring so we can execute the techniques and the moves that we're trying to improve on. And then finish off on the heavy bag, complete the pros. heavy bag. Oh, pros on me? Am I frozen? Chat, am I frozen? Chat, talk to me if I'm frozen. Yeah, I can see you now. Okay, what was the last thing you heard, Lunatic? Uh, what you were going to change as far as um, uh, doing the run and then uh, between sparring. So, uh, yeah, on so, a day. so again, that circuit you guys had to me is great on a non sparring day. And on a sparring day, the sparring is the main attraction, right? So we would probably, like, the pros that we work with on days that we spar, let's say we're sparring on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, depending on the week. Let's say we spar on Tuesday. Only thing we're doing before the sparring is maybe some jump rope and some shadow boxing to get the blood flowing. And then we're going to go ahead and hit our four to ten rounds of sparring, whatever part of camp we're in. And then let's just say, for instance, we do – six rounds of sparring then after the six rounds of sparring i'll tell my guy jump on the heavy bag and finish his rounds do another six rounds on the bag and then we'll finish off with maybe some table work which is like the core but as you can see the main focus was the sparring that day as opposed mm -hmm. to in our body up we're super drained and now we're going in there trying to, to spar it kind of eliminates the 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 what we're trying it's like kind of like doing a full routine of cardio and then going to lift weights it's like you're not going to get the most of the weight training if you did cardio first, right? We want to go in there nice and strong and get the strength in and then finish off with the cardio. It's the same thing with the sparring. We don't want to eliminate what we have in our body for sparring because that's where we're going to get the work on what needs to get worked on with full maximum energy, if that makes sense. Right. And one thing is, is that this is the second gym that actually I've been at in Wisconsin that did it that way to where they would do – full calisthenics, full bag work. And then when you're completely exhausted, then you would go in and spar for, you know, to put your, your body in that mindset of when you're, when you can't keep your arms up or stuff like that. And I don't, I don't know if that's just a Wisconsin thing or what, but uh, it's been multiple gyms that I've been to that uh, do it that way. I may, I may see myself maybe throwing that in there as a monkey wrench routine to a guy who's experienced, maybe as a monkey wrench, like let's change it up on him, let's gas him out and then throw him in the ring and see how he does. But as a main way to train, um, I would advise that you leave the sparring for the sparring and the conditioning for the conditioning. So you could be strong to each one and get the most out of each workout. You know what I'm saying? But that's just right. my point of view, take it for what is worth, champ. Hey, what do I know, right? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to give you another perspective. That's right, the, right. Everybody's got their own uh, point of view. We would, uh, I want to say that we would actually do once a month, um, just nothing but uh, conditioning. With a, uh, we would go to this parking garage and do the stairs, and it would be, you know, first you do with singles, and then then you would do every other stair, and then you would try and do uh, every third stair, and then you would get up to the top of the parking garage, and then you would do sprints and stuff like that and uh sandbag work uh over the head sandbag work and shit like that um oh, <laughs> sorry for swearing i don't want so what are you doing nowadays are you are you um boxing anymore or are you just kind of not no nah, the routine that i've been in um because gyms are so uh scarce in my area i had just moved into this house so i i had a couple uh uh life ex changes real quick but I have a, a heavy bag of my own that's a 75 Everlast with a, it's not a, a leather bag, it's an actual canvas bag. And then I have a, a medium uh, ring speed bag that I can hang up in my own garage. I have uh, multiple different ropes, uh, like weighted ropes, speed ropes. Um, and you know, you can put a, a tape, of, you know, use duct tape and put a, a square in your, in your on the floor so that you can get your, your footwork and, you know, shit like that. So, I mean, um, I do it at home um, and then I work full time. So it's, 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 it's what you can do. I mean, I do have my amateur uh, boxing uh, membership. So with USA Boxing, if I want to do any masters or anything like that, I can still do that. 
and then it's uh it needs to be renewed in uh january so. have you have you have you fought before or is it something you're considering uh, it was uh, something I was training for to go to the Wisconsin State Golden Gloves along with another uh, guy um, that was at the same gym. And he went. He actually lost his bout. Uh, I thought he won his bout. Um, there was a you know a couple knockdowns that weren't considered or standing eight. So, um, but I have the ability to try and either go in uh, either under the master's class or even under the um, what's the uh, um, elite. So because I'm I'll be 40 in March. Also, I mean, you're 39. You still got a chance to do a regular amateur. If you wait till 40, then you do the master. So like, they extended it. So you still got time to do either one. Yep. So you may be, maybe doing a master's might be the way to go so you can go in there in a nice setting with guys around your age as opposed to fighting an 18-year-old kid who's super motivated and super hungry. You know what I'm saying? A little different mentality. But it's all up to you, man, if you want to challenge mm -hmm. yourself which way you want to challenge yourself. But that's what's up, man. And I know I owe you an interview. I know you got something going on. Let people know how they can find you, man. Um, you can find me either on uh, Instagram. You can find me on Clubhouse. You can find me on um, YouTube. And you can find me at the Lunatic Libertarian on YouTube. You can find me on Spotify. And you can find me on Acre FM uh, at the Lunatic Libertarian. I do a lot of political stuff right now. I'm trying to uh, expand my, uh, my guest uh, castings to include multiple different avenues. Um, it's all about, uh, for me, Boxing is a, a freedom for the individual to express themselves physically, and it's also an avenue if there's any kind of uh, um, tendencies that you want to express that it's a legal form without any kind of uh, uh, repercussions legally. So it's kind of like uh, volunteering for uh, personal conflict, and um, it's a way to, uh, just like the military or anything else, it's a discipline thing for me as well. So, you know, I'm a vet, so... It's, it's a way to stay in those routines that keep you disciplined. You know what I mean? All right. Well, that's what's up, man. Thank you for getting on here. We'll correlate with each other. And uh, I appreciate you, man. You've been in here for a long time now. So I appreciate your support. Roger that, man. If I could uh, take the money and put it into them courses, I would definitely do that. But as a family man, you know, oh, I said if I could get on that payment plan, man, I, 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 I'd be doing it. So uh, we'll figure something out, man. Roger that, man. I appreciate everything you do. Peace. Thank you, man. My man, Lunatic in the building, man, showing love, giving us a little bit of his boxing routine. Mateo, what's good? Hi, coach. How you doing? How are you? I know you were patiently waiting, man. What's up? Hi, <laughs> yeah. So I'm actually, uh, I used to be a silver gloves um, champion back in the day, but I'm trying to get into golden gloves now. Uh, it's been kind of difficult for me. I actually live in Puerto Rico right now. I'm like in the process okay. of going to uh, from San Juan. Okay. Uh, La, La, I got I got I got um some I got property in Puerto Rico, Yabacoa. Yeah, I got I used to train in La Perla. Okay. And, oh, damn! You from the hood? No, I don't want no problems. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm actually moving back to Florida. I'm actually really excited. So I don't know if you're located in Florida. Um, I'm located in Florida. That's where I uh, that's where I competed when I was an amateur fighter. Um, I, lived oh, in okay. I lived in Florida for ten years, and that's why you know I fought in the Golden Gloves in Florida, the state champion, uh, PALs, the state PALs, uh, Sunshine State Games, few a, a few tournaments down there. So that's mm -hmm. where I picked up my amateur boxing experience but i live in i live right outside of philadelphia okay but yeah my plan is uh i really want to get into golden gloves uh my routine right now i'm kind of like in the middle of moving but i want to get like a solid routine i just want to become a cardio machine again it's been a while i had surgery on my shoulder because i fell down from my bike but um it feels good i i can I can fight. I've been sparring, and but I, what I've been usually doing right now is basically, like I said in the in the chat, five mile runs, uh, Monday to Friday, uh, and shadow boxing like rounds. How old, are you? How old are you? I'm 23, sir. So, like I told you in the chat, I think running five miles five days in a row is a little bit unnecessary. Um, it can be done as long as you feel fine doing it, mm -hmm. right? I know guys who feel like if they miss a day of running, I used to be like that. So yeah. a little context about me, 
I used to run seven days a week and it was foolish looking back on it now. So I'm just telling you from my own experience. Yeah, of course. So, so what I would suggest in a guy's situation like you is I would run every other day mm -hmm. and I would lower the miles, right? I would say, let's just say three miles. All right, let me run right? three but miles. The goal, would, the goal would be to run those three miles as fast as I possibly can. Sprints, so, basically. So, no, not sprints, just running three miles as fast as you can. So let's just say, for instance, you could do three miles in 21 minutes. That's a seven-minute mile. Mm -hmm. If you're running three miles in, in 21 minutes, and this is a running – I'm giving you a, something that I people ask me privately who pay for my Coach Anthony 2.0 and stuff. What's the best running routine? I'm telling you right now, publicly right now, everybody can hear it. Three miles in 21 minutes three times a week. If you can do that, okay, you are in very good cardio shape if you can do it in 21 minutes. Now, if you're doing three miles in, let's just say, 30 minutes, mm -hmm. we got to improve it. And the reason why we take the day in between is so we could be strong on the mm -hmm. next run. Yeah. See, that's the issue that people forget about training, right? And just yeah. like you told the gentleman about the, the sparring after <clears throat> the conditioning. The, yeah. body, the body doesn't build muscle in the gym, right? We tear it down when we work out. And then it, and then we have to, we build our muscle when we, we're recovering. So we have to think about recovery so we can perform in the next session. So yeah. we want to go hard one day, recover the next, go hard the next day, recover the next. And that's just your running. Don't forget that we have shadow boxing. You should be finding a gym that has a heavy bag. If you have a heavy bag eventually you're going to be sparring. Right, you'll be jumping rope. You'll yeah. be doing some calisthenics. You'll be doing some sprinting. Maybe one day a week we'll dedicate it to just sprinting. So now that's a fourth day of running. Mm -hmm. okay, so if you do the boxing routine and you do the the way it's supposed to be done, not just shadow boxing. Right now you're just shadow boxing. So my first advice to you would be if you can get in a gym with a heavy bag, yeah, get in with a heavy bag. So now we can get some more work done. You see what I'm saying? Of you course, it's been hard. Yeah. So there's just a lot of little tweaks that I would do to your regimen. If you don't mm. have access to a, um, a, a heavy bag, then what else can we do? You know, what else do you have access to? Okay, so my situation right now, like like I mentioned earlier, is that um, I'm currently, like, moving. I'm actually going back to the States, to Florida. So I want to, like, you know, pre prepare myself for when I go into an actual real gym in Florida. I'm sure you've been in a couple real good gyms that are, are very dedicated to the sport, and that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I'm not really trying to go pro, but I I wanna I wanna get into Golden Gloves. I, the the most I've done was Silver Gloves, but I I wanna get into Golden Gloves and compete for the first time. I I, I haven't been able to do that in Puerto Rico because it, it might be a great place to train because it's the hard boxing too but it's really hard if, if for a person that lives here it's been really hard for me to obtain any actual good coaches like yourself that want to actually help their fighters you know so that's why i came here for some a little a little bit of guidance you know i know i have to pay the course <laughs> well, but, well, well listen listen well listen man look i i did this video today live i'm not charging anybody for this information right I always try to let people know if you want to go a step further with me, I have an offer that that I have. So it's like people always used to DM me and say, hey, coach, uh, do you uh, have yeah. anything like a buy? And I'm oh. like, yeah, now I do. Right. So, yes, you can sign up to 2.0 if that's something you're interested in. You can get the courses. But right now, based off of what you're asking me, yeah, going to the Golden Gloves. Is that's an easy thing for you to do. That's not going to be difficult. You know, the thing is, the Golden Gloves come up. I believe in the beginning of the year. So if you haven't been prepared for the Golden Gloves as of now, no, you're man. probably going to miss them. You're probably going to miss the Golden Gloves in 2023. And you're probably going to have to wait till the following year for the Golden Gloves. But that's not a big deal. Yeah. What you want to do is just compete again. Let's just say that. Forget the Golden Gloves. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks about the Golden Gloves as like the Holy Grail. We ain't worried about the Golden Gloves to that level. You're not getting paid for the Golden Gloves, okay? So at the end of the day, as long as we can get you prepared for a competition again and then work you in that direction, I think that's a more obtainable goal and is a more realistic goal. 
So the main thing you have to do is get in a get in a gym that has equipment, right? We can't just shadow box. You have to get in a gym that has a heavy bag. You have to get in a gym that has people that you can spar with. You have to get in a gym that has a coach that is guiding amateur competitive amateur boxers. Okay. All right, this is this is the foundation. Until you get that right, then you're you're mainly just doing this for fitness. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right, sounds good. I yeah, appreciate man. it. Yeah, man, but I, I don't think you're in a bad, I don't think you're in a far place. How old are you? I'm 23, sir. 23, so you're you're young. You got plenty of time. You've seen the lunatic libertarian said he's ready to do a master's and do a golden gloves. He's 39, right? So you have time to do this. And when you go to Florida, you're going to have plenty of options of where you want to go train, hopefully. Mm -hmm. You definitely need a heavy bag. You need somebody to spar with. <laughs> yeah. you, you need those two to be a fighter. You know what I'm for saying? For sure, for sure. All right, All right and, the coach. and the courses and the guidance that I have on my website are always available to you, man. If you want to fast track your skill set and have somebody like me guide you in the background, I'm more than happy to do it. For sure. If you don't mind, you could put the the link uh, down below. Is, is there a link I can press? Yeah, I'll do that for you right now, my man. Thank you, Mateo. Thank you. Have a good day. Man, Mateo in there, interested, man. I appreciate you coming on here and talking to me, guys. So as you can see, man, this boxing thing is for all ages. A lot of people have the misconception that you have to be um, a certain age. Mateo, there goes the link right there, www.coachanthonyboxing.com. If not, you can easily just go to Chrome, do the same thing. But um, listen, guys, you guys know what I do. You guys know I got courses. You guys know I got Coach Anthony 2.0 where I'm guiding people behind the scenes. That's always an option. So if you guys want to move forward with me, I'm always here for you. But don't forget that I come on here live every day to try to help as many people as I can. I'm not just trying to sell you my stuff. I'm on here selling my stuff as I'm trying to help those who maybe aren't ready to buy, maybe can't afford it. That's all good, man. You know what I'm saying? But if you are looking to move forward, I'm here for you. And that's why I opened up the doors to try to help as many people as I can. And I'm looking to create the best online boxing teaching platform that's available at the moment. So what I'm doing is I'm directly working with people now as opposed to, you know, before. So this is just something that I want you guys to know about. But as far as the routine, guys, running too much can be detrimental. Because think about it like this. If you're running really hard one day and then the next day, your run might not be as strong. And now you're just going through the motion. Like, I ran like three or five miles yesterday, man. For some reason, I feel so tired today. Yeah, you feel tired because your body wants a day off. So instead of running, let's do something else. Let's be productive. Maybe that's your strength and conditioning day. Maybe that's the day that you focus on, you know, your, your, your different calisthenic exercises and your medicine ball slams and your combat ropes and things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe the next day is when you spar. You know what I'm saying? You want to you wanna do good in sparring. Why don't we be nice and fresh when we spar? How about that? You know what I mean? We're nice and fresh. We got our body feeling good. Instead of killing our body in an exercise routine and then sparring, why not go into the sparring fully prepared to execute everything that you've been working so hard in the gym to learn? You see what I'm saying? So it's all about working smarter, not harder. You're still going to get a hell of a workout sparring. Don't think because, oh, yeah, I went into the gym. I went into the fight. And... I went into the sparring match after doing my exercise, so this is going to make me better. Maybe not, because maybe you don't perform the same in sparring as you would have performed had you went in there fresh. So now you're in the sparring match all gassed out, getting punched on, because you're not fully fresh to defend, slip, and work on the skills needed. And the only way you're going to improve on your skills is through repetition, 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 and doing the repetition with good form, good technique, being sharp, being alert. So these are just little tweaks to the programs that I would make, guys. This is why I did this, because I want to hear what you guys are currently doing. Let me go ahead and um, read some of the comments I might have missed. Omar Zeldin, what's good, coach? I read through the content and build you from the ground of 1.0 and 2.0. I think 2.0 is exactly what I need, but I'll start at 1.0. How fast should I go through the content? Guys, do not rush through the content. OK, especially if you get the master box and bundle, there's no need because you got all the content at your disposal. 
listen, when I coach somebody in real time, until they get the move, we don't move on, right? So if it took you three months to get a jab, guess what we're doing for three months? We're going to get that jab. You know what I mean? Well, it might take another kid two weeks. You know, everybody's different. Everybody's got their strong points. Other people got their weak points. So never feel like, oh, I got to get to the next step. I got to get to the next step. I got to get to the next step. You know what I'm saying? Because time slots. And before you know it, a year has passed by. And you're like, oh, snap. Can't... Look, I felt like last year we were doing no days off November. Just last year. Like, this is literally about to end our second annual no days off November. It just felt like yesterday that I met the lunatic on my chats and we were just meeting each other and he was making comments. And now I just talked to him again. This is year number two. Okay. Um, it felt like just yesterday when I opened my gym. So, and that was 10 years, over 10 years ago. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is don't rush through the process because the time is going to fly. What we want to do is we want to execute and get as good as we possibly can with the techniques. So before you know it, listen, if you do it right the first time, you don't got to go back and redo it. But if you don't do it right the first time, now we got to go back. We got to fix everything. And sometimes habits are hard to break. So don't rush through the process, Omar. Go through it slow by slow. And also, guys, if you get the Master Boxing Bundle... This is why when I created my offer for you guys with the package that I still got at 90% off, when you get the Master Boxing Bundle, I give a free coaching call. During the COVID, when we were locked down, I was doing Zoom calls for $500 a pop and people were paying for it. I am giving you basically a free call with the bundle. So I can see where you are, evaluate you, tell you where I think you should be, tell you anything you need to know, answer any questions you may have. And of course, if you wanted to move forward with me, we can always do that. But at least when you get off that coaching call, you will have a stronger understanding of how you should proceed with the bundle and your boxing journey. So this is just me trying to give you guys as much as I can. You know what I'm saying? you know, and help as many people as I can in places that I can't reach. My man Mateo's in Puerto Rico. I'm in Philadelphia. Like, we're not next to each other. There's only so much I could do. But if I can get him in front of the screen, talk to him regularly, help him, guide him, watch his sparring, give him tips, send him plans, I can guide him much better that way. And that's what 2.0 is all about for those who are interested. Thank you, champ. If anybody wants, to, anybody else wants to come in here and talk to me, um, I'm more than glad to do it, guys. As you can see, um, I just want to see who I can help in here, man. I just want to see how many people I can help. So, anybody else who wants to come in here, hit that streamyard link, get in here, talk to me, ask me whatever you want, talk to me about your boxing routine. You know what I mean? And let's see what we can get out of it. Let's see how I can help you. You know what I mean? I might be able to give you one little nugget, one little drool that can take you to another level. Have you ever, have you ever like read a book and like the whole book is kind of like, I know this already. Okay, whatever. But, but then you get one nugget, pause. You get one little nugget, you get one little jewel that you're just like, Damn, that's what I was looking for. That's what I was searching for in this damn book. I read this whole book for that one little line. That one liner changed the trajectory of my life. Well, that's what happens sometimes when you have conversations with people and you ask questions and, you know, you pick people's brain, people who've been doing this a long time, and you're like, got it. That's what I needed. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I try to do with these lives. That's why I encourage you guys to you know, participate in these chats and stuff like that, because it might just be one thing I say that might help you. You know what I mean? Out of a hundred things I say, it might just be one. But that one thing might be what changes everything. What's a good routine for preparation for a national tournament? Uh, for national tournaments, man, I mean, it all varies, champ. It all varies, you know what I mean? It depends on you know, everything, man, but you definitely got to have a sparring routine. 
that, like sparring is number one, okay, in these situations when we're getting prepared for national tournaments, sparring is number one. Everything else comes after the sparring. So, for instance, I got a kid in my community, the Coach Anthony 2.0, and his father asked me today, because I got a few fathers who are training their kids, and they're asking me, they're asking me for my advice. And he asked me, he said, my kid's fighting uh, in two weeks, and um, what do you think we should be focusing on? And my answer was immediate, sparring. And he was like, really? Not strength and condition? Sparring. That If you give me a kid right now and you tell me he's fighting in two weeks, I'm looking for sparring. Has he been sparring already? No, we got to get him some work. We got to get him in the ring. We got to get his eyes sharp. We got to get him going. We got to we got to get his reflexes and him prepared for combat. We're done hitting heavy bags and mitts and stuff without sparring at this stage. Now, hopefully you've been leading up to so much sparring that at that point we could start thinking about the taper down. But if you only give me two weeks, with a, I don't got time to taper down. We got to get to work. We got to pick up rounds and we got to treat the fight like just another sparring day. But once he's in a rhythm, it's easier to get up and spar. You know, it's easier to get up and go to the gym when you go to the gym consistently. It's harder when you, you know, took a long time and now you got to go. Now your body's like, oh, man, I ain't done this in a while. You, you know, you leave your car sitting too long. You don't start it. All of a sudden, the engine's like, dah, 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 damn, I got to jump start my car. Well, the body's no different and the sparring is no different. We got to be consistently moving, consistently sparring to be sharp. Like the old saying goes, the rest is the rust. You know what I'm saying? So we got to make sure that we keep those cylinders firing. And sparring is super important, guys, when you're getting prepared for a tournament, especially a professional prize fight, a tournament. This is ultimately going to come down to how are you performing in sparring. And then you translate it to the fight. I've adopted the coach I was from Fast Eddie Chambers. Look at that. My man Fast Eddie gave you a jewel. Most of your tutorials are like that for me, coach. A few things I already know or do, but then I get that one nugget that makes it all worth it, and then another and another. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that, man. And that's the goal, man. The goal is to give you guys real stuff that's really going to help you. We got my man. All day, all day. What's up, my guy? What's up, man? I see another dude approaching middle age, trying to fight that good fight and staying in shape. Yay, man! You got to trust me. I'm fighting every. You know, we got to fight, man. That's what they say, man. You're just fighting death away as much as you can. <laughs> dude, I got my uh, I got my first forty and up coming up here, and uh, I love. First of all, anybody that anybody that puts boxing out there, thank you for giving us content because there's not enough people talking about the sport anymore. And uh, especially as, especially as like, you're not going to be 23 forever. Like when I was 23, I could party three, four nights a week, do seven miles of road work in the morning and just keep it moving. You know, around 33, 34, 35, the knees start, you, you can't recover the same. And there's a big, it's a lot easier to stay in shape than it is to get in shape. And yeah, I mean, if you're three, four weeks out from somebody, if you're not doing anything other than working, working on sequence and like mitts and shit like that. Sorry, you, you curse on your party. I'm sorry, but that was rude to me. That's cool. uh, good. Yeah, if, if you're doing anything other than working on technique and just kind of keeping your cardio up and let your weight come down, like you you can't rev the engine 10, 15, 20 days before you're supposed to compete. Right. You got to already be in motion. Right. That's what I'm saying, man. So like if, if you got a six round fight coming up, you should be able to go nine rounds on mid. It's not a problem. Like 1.5 X was always kind of like what I aim for. And, uh, you know, now that I get older and stuff like that, you I don't know, man. By 30, most of your technique should be there. You should just be getting better at what you can already do. I mean, it depends when you started. But, yeah, I agree with you. It depends. If, if you're competing at a high level, you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to teach someone 36 all of a sudden how to go southpaw and fight out of the shell and switch stances on it. Like, you know, whatever kind of gets you to the dance. But, uh, yeah, and we don't got enough young dudes boxing either, man. That's what makes me sad. Now, where are you from? Uh, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, so I came out of Gleason's when I was a kid. I live in the mountains of the Carolinas now. 
Okay, okay, okay. And what kind of boxing experience do you got? Uh, I came up out of the PAL since I was like seven. I was back in the days of like Zab Judah. Um, you know, I did the diamond gloves as a kid. I fought in the golden gloves in Coney Island. Um, I've been mostly coaching for like the last 12, 13. I, I have a full-time job. I just coach a couple of, I actually coach boxing for a bunch of MMA fighters, but I just work on them with their boxing. And now that I just, uh, I hit the big four Oh, I said, you know what, man, uh, in the words of Richard Pryor, I ain't dead yet. So, uh, I got this bug up my ass with two bum knees and arthritic hip. Uh, I got better health insurance than I did when I was 22 though. So there's that. So you're going to compete? I'm going to I'm going to compete uh April of next year. Okay, so you're giving yourself a nice timeline. Uh my my weight was uh I'm I'm going to come in around a buck 80, a buck 83, a buck 87 depending on what we agree to fight at. And I was sitting about 215. So I'm not going to go from 215 to 187 and expect to keep that cardio. So I'm going to try to get down to like I started at like 215, I'm down to like 207. If I can get down to like 195 by February, I should naturally pull off that last seven, eight pounds by the time April comes around. And I, I want to be able to, a lot of guys, you drop weight too quick, man. You lose a little bit of the crack that you got. You lose a little bit of the pop. So when guys get super, super depleted. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Well, that's what's up, man. I'm proud of you, man. I commend you for, you know, wanting to go out there and challenge yourself. A lot of guys, they think they're old at, four. listen, there's a fighter by the name of Jerome Boots and is here in the Philadelphia area. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but his father, his name is, uh, his father's name is Bozy Ennis, and you can look him up. He's 70 years old. He still spars with 20-year-olds, and he he doesn't spar with headgear, and he be lighting these guys up. He be whooping them, man, like legitimately at 70. And when you see this guy, you're like, how old is he, 50? No, he's 70. So I think that we're we're preconditioned to think we're older than we are. It all comes down to how we take care of ourselves and what we do on the day to day. So now that you're taking your health in your in your health in your own hands and you're taking this first and you're preparing for something, you probably will feel younger in a year from today than you do at this particular moment in time. I'd I'd be willing to bet that that seventy year old has probably spent the majority of his life in shape too. There's a big difference between somebody who who gets in shape at forty. And somebody who's been training for like 23, 24, 25 years, that that baseline cardio. Uh, and when we talk about older boxers, man, it's uh, everybody always likes to mention George Foreman, what he did to Michael Moore. A lot of people don't even realize what uh, what B-Hop, like how old he was and how he started in boxing. Yeah, absolutely. Was he 26 when he was in the penal system? Yeah, I think that's when he went. I think he, I think he turned professional at 26, but it was somewhere. But I feel like he, he, he was in prison. Then you got uh, – What's his, uh, I'm sorry, Deontay Wilder, you know, 20 years old. Was he 20, 21 years old when he started boxing? Yeah. And the dude just came out with the touch of death. And, like, you don't got to start from the time you're 11. But uh, how old are you, man? I'm 39. Oh, we're the same age, then. You you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I feel you it do, all. I feel, I feel all the aches and pains, man. Trust me. <laughs> you, you, you do deadlifts on Tuesday. when And when you're getting on your knees for church on Sunday, you're like, oh, why does that hurt? I don't even do deadlifts no more. Put it that way. <laughs> that is, bro, that, and that's the other thing, too, man. When you start training, when you get – that's why I said it's – uh, like you said, it's not about getting older, but, like, if you build up a base of strength and speed and cardio – it's a lot easier to maintain that in your four in your thirties and your forties than it is to ascertain that in your thirties and your forties. Like no one's going to, no one's going to, no one's going to be an obese accountant, go to title boxing or nine round boxing and all of a sudden develop hand speed. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the kind of stuff that you forge in your teens and your twenties and you can kind of maintain it in your forties and fifties if you really want to. But, uh, you know, when I do some of the cardio coaching for some of the older cats, uh, you know, I mean, you can get guys to be proficient, but, I don't know, like that, that sh what do you call it, a uh, fast twitch muscle fiber? Like when you watch somebody just snap off a jab or take the head off the center line and like sidestep with a three. Um, I don't know. And I just, I, I hope that our sport can, uh, I don't know if it's going to take Dana White promoting it, but I, I really hope that our sport can become mainstream once again because it makes me sad that there's a whole generation of 15 to 22 year olds that, uh, they don't have a Zab Judah, a Costa Zoo, a Kermit Cintron, a Winky Ride, a Fernando Vargas, a Shane Mike. Like, you know, when you, we're the same age, man. When we were young, there were tw like the casual fan could spit off 20, 25 w WBC fighters. And if we went into Buffalo Wild Wings tonight and we asked like a casual dude, hey, can you name five fighters? They'd probably say Tyson Fury, 
Ryan Garcia, Canelo Alvarez, they might know Gennady Golovkin, and that's probably where it would fit. That's where it would peter out. Yeah, I think I think I think uh, that has to do with the fact that back then there was only two networks really showing boxing: Showtime, HBO, maybe ESPN. Now you got you don't get- you remember USA Boxing? Yeah, USA Boxing too. But you have to. But now you got to have an app. You know, you got to get the, the Zone app. You know, the ESPN's on the app, and you know, it's just a little more complicated to get to the boxing matches now. And I think that that prevents people too. You know. What do you think about these celebrity cats doing boxing? You a fan of it or not? I'm not a fan of it. I don't watch it per se, but um, I don't have a big problem with it either. Anything that's going to bring attention to the sport, more people actually are interested in boxing that would never have been if it wasn't for some of those celebrities. So um, I see guys, I see young kids that, that they pay attention to Jake Paul matches and it's like that makes them want to box. So it's not a big deal to me. I don't hate it. Uh, but again, we know the truth. We know what real boxing is. I don't get fooled by it. I don't start comparing Jake Paul to Canelo like some of these guys were like, oh, yeah, does he do? What do you think will happen if they fought? I'm like, come on, man, don't ask me that question. But at the same time, if Jake Paul, you know what I mean, could bring more attention to boxing, by all means, man, bring it to the boxing world. You know what I mean? I'll tell you what, man, I was sad to see my boy Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco. He, uh, he got murked by a kid that I saw fight at Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships, Brian Maxwell. They fought in the last uh, celebrity boxing thing. And uh, I was really hoping to see Chad Ocho Cinco. And then there was another guy, too, for the 49ers, big dude. He just fought on that. Uh, cause I, I was big. Remember Badu Jack? Of course. Like, I was a big Badu Jack fan. So that's what brought me into celebrity boxing is he fought on the card where Jake Paul fought Nate Robinson. And I'm from I'm a Knicks fan. I hated seeing Jake do Nick, uh, Nate, uh, Nate Robinson like that. It wasn't very fun, but. Like you said, man, people are getting fooled. You, you remember the movie The Great White Hype? Yeah. That's kind of what I think of when I see Jake Paul. Yeah, I mean, it's obvious what's happening to anybody who knows the game. But, again, I never knock nobody's hustle. So it is what it is. And it's up to these fighters to learn from what he's doing as well. You guys have to learn marketing. You guys got to learn what he's doing and kind of maybe figure out a way to spin it for your own thing. So – all they're doing is setting the way and paving the way for younger boxers to say, OK, how can I be smarter about how I approach the marketing side of the game? And if you don't learn from it, then you'll just be sitting in the dust. Well, I tell you what, man, Ryan Garcia is doing an amazing job of marketing himself right now. If there's any boxers out there and they're saying, how can I build uh, like Tyson Fury does a great job of building his fan base. Um, you know, De La Hoya, like you look at those guys, the guys that I just mentioned, like before, before the advent of social media, you had to have HBO. Um, what was it called? Countdown? Was that the thing they used to do? HBO twenty four seven. Yeah, twenty four seven. So like that's the only way we can get to know who uh, Fernando Vargas was or uh, Carlos Baldemir. Like we would have to watch these like three part, almost like mini documentary series to gain interest in the fighters. And now with live streaming and social media apps, you can kind of go for a walk with them doing. And none of it's scripted either. So, I mean, Tyson Fury's an interesting dude. Uh, but I, I don't know, man. I, I really hope that uh, – I, I think that Dana White's been talking about doing a, his own boxing promotion, and I, I think that that would be the best thing in the world for the sport. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Maybe, man. I don't know. I don't know what, what he's going to do for the sport as far as making it better. But, you know, what makes UFC um, – easier for him to navigate is it's just it's one thing controlling everybody where in boxing you have a bunch of different promotions and then and that's where the issues start you know you got this promoter has these set of fighters this promoter has this set of fighters and then they they can't come to a business agreement where the ufc kind of had all their guys under one umbrella and i mean that's what makes ufc a little bit easier to promote the big fights because they control everything which with boxing, I don't know what Dana White's going to be able to really do unless he gets all those fighters to sign to him. You know what I mean? Well, I tell you what, man, with with the exception of the top five or six fighters in the world, there's only five or six fighters that can build their own brand and promote their own fights. Like in the in the top hundred fighters in the world, the next 95, they need a, they need a machine like the WBC, like the IBF, like the WBF to promote and build their brand. And if Dana can do in boxing, you know, like nothing would have made me happier than if Floyd Mayweather had to fight a prime Sugar Shane Mosley. You know, like when you when you promote your own fight and you dictate the uh, 
like in UFC, if you don't fight, you have to vacate the belt. Um, I just think that'll be a great thing for by. And you remember, to your 39, man, guys, it wasn't uncommon for guys to fight four times a year back when me and you were kids. Yeah, more than that, six. Right. And how many of the top five, how many of the top 15 ranked fighters in the world, how many of them fight more than 1.3 times a year? Yeah, it's a shame, man. It's definitely a shame, man. And again, it's, it's, I mean, guys like Terrence Crawford should be fighting more often. Guys like, you know, shit, all these guys, man, should be fighting more often, man. So, yeah, you're right. That, that, and that's, that's, that's what's changing about boxing. Well, that's uh, I, I think that if it is going to get I think that if boxing is going to get good again, that's another thing about the UFC. That's great is with the advent of social media, man, we live in a very what have you done for me lately society. And nobody's going to wait around 15 months to watch somebody fight. Right. You know, you, you got like a four year window to be a prime athlete, whether that's 26 to 30 or 29 to 33. Would you agree? Most of the time you got about a four year window. To be at your absolute peak. Um, I don't know, man. I think some boxers do it longer. I think it depends on the kind of punishment they take. But, you know, I, I can agree that somewhere in that four to, I don't know, seven, eight year radius depends on the fighter. Because Floyd Mayweather did it for from the age of, I don't know, since he became a pro all the way to he was about 35, 36. So yeah, I, but those, those last six years, he fought one time a year. Was it one time a year? Maybe. I mean, he fought like Carlos Baldemir. He fought Arturo Gatti. He fought. Um, but even but even so, but even so, the fact that he was able to still be dominant for that long is a little bit longer than four years. You know what I mean? Is all I'm saying. Well, that, that's what I was. That's what I obviously he's the exception, not the rule. I'm saying most guys have like a four year window where they can put their foot on the gas and train and compete at a high level. And if you fight one and a half times a year, that's six fights. So if it takes you two to get to the title and three defenses, you know, you've got six opportunities to get paid. And if a dude can fight two and a half, three times a year, that's 12 fights. Uh, I don't know. I just, that's why I don't like the self-promotion in boxing. So I, I love athletes being in control of their own brand, but sometimes I think that the fans are the ones that pay the ultimate price. Cause we don't get to see them. Imagine if you had to fight every four months to maintain a WBC belt. No, I'm in, I'm in agreement with you that they definitely should be more more fighting. But these fighters aren't in control. That's the problem. They're not in control. They're controlled by the promotion. And what's happening is they're getting blamed for something that their promoters aren't coming to agreement with. Like, for instance, the Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence situation. That has nothing to do with Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence. There's a bunch of other stuff going on with that that's preventing them two guys from fighting. And it's coming down to promoters and everything it's, a, it's, it's just a flux so it's not just them so i i, I but i'm 100 percent agreeing that boxers need to be competing more often and um unfortunately right now that's not the case who uh if that actually does uh come to fruition who do you got Errol spence and terrence crawford it's a good fight man i, I like both guys for different reasons I think that uh, if Terrence Crawford allows Errol Spence to get to an early start the way he does with a lot of the other guys, I don't know if he's going to be able to work his way back in the fight. So depending on how the fight starts, if Errol Spence gets an early lead, I got Errol Spence winning. Um, and if Errol Spence gets reckless, I can see Terrence Crawford uh, clipping him in a counter exchange and possibly hurting him and you know doing what he does to everybody else. It's such a 50-50 fight that – you really that, that that's the worst fight to ever bet on. I would hate to have to put money on that fight because you just either guy could win at any moment. You know what I mean? And I got one question for you before I dip out because you're obviously a, a a balls deep fan in the sport. There's one name that's not a it's not a household name, just a fighter that you were a huge fan of and you think that new fans should look up to appreciate. Who's like one guy when you think back in the last twenty years where you're like, oh, young fighters, young people. Other fighters need to look at this dude as an example of how to compete like a gentleman, how to be a warrior, how to like one dude. If you could just if you could turn the clock back 15 years, what's one guy that not a lot of people talk about that you love to watch fight? Man, that's a good question, man. <laughs> Sorry, Bubba. Got to put it's your channel, Bubby. I'm putting you on the spot, man. Yeah, that's a that's a good question, man. Um, because a lot of these guys get forgotten over the years, and you know, so it's it's it's. It's tough, man. You guys get you guys get forgotten. I mean, you had so many, man. You had guys like Gerald McClellan, who was a 
fantastic, rough, good fighting slash boxer who's, you know, unfortunately has a brain trauma issue now and he could fight his ass off. Even guys like Roy Jones Jr. avoided him. Um, so you can look at him. Uh, you, Man, I don't know, man. That, that, that Like, that's a long list of guys, man. I, I really don't know. Who do you got? I mean, I mentioned him twice. Um, he, he's a Brooklyn cat. So I think Zab was a guy who had all the talent in the world. Just, uh, you know, that six inches between his ears kind of kept him out of being like a, you know, the, I think it prevented him from reaching his utmost potential. I think Louis Colazzo was a great, t- great kid to watch back in the day. Uh, I think Costa Zoo was a great guy to watch. I mean, young kids today, man, they might not even know the name Winky Wright. And oh, Winky man. Wright was the – like, I loved watching Winky Wright fight. I, I, I'm going to be honest. Winky Wright helped me as an amateur boxer um, l- learn how to win fights by just fighting like this when I was having trouble uh, really learning the game, and it simplified boxing for me. So Winky Wright was a hell of a, a influence in my life, especially when I lived in Florida. But – um. All those guys you mentioned are good. Guys like Eric Morales was extremely good. He doesn't get enough credit. Um, all those guys, Diego Corrales. All those guys in that era that we grew up on were all fantastic fighters. In the era before us, like the, the Sugar Ray Leonard era, that era is fantastic. Um, so, like I said, man, you could just write, you could just get a piece of paper out right now. You'd be writing names for hours, man. All those guys are fantastic fighters for different reasons. And that's why. Boxing is a beautiful thing, and that's why it's good to learn because it's like if you put 20 world champions in a room, they all fought differently, but they all were world champions. So who's right, who's wrong? We'll find out on fight night. You know what I'm saying? Well, this is what I'm – if any of those guys who are building their own brand, the one the one thing that made boxing great back then is, like, granted, you had the Ali's, you had the Mike Tyson's, you had the Oscar De La Hoya's and the Floyd Mayweather's, but the depth chart was 15 deep of people that were household names. Right now, the, the, the problem with for a guy like Ryan Garcia is there's nobody there's nobody that the gym teacher that watches boxing three times a year is gonna pay seventy nine ninety five to watch Ryan Garcia fight. That's the when Sugar Ray Leonard was there, like him and Hagler and Hearns could just do the fucking merry go round for you know, they could fight six times sequentially and people be cool. That that's the thing that makes it tough in boxing right now is uh, none of those top top guys have a dance partner. Nobody's paying to watch Tyson Fury fight Anthony Joshua. Nobody's paying to watch him fight Deontay Wilder for a fourth time. And I, I don't think anybody wants to see Andy Garcia or uh, Usyk fight Tyson Fury. The poor bastard, he, he don't have a dance partner. And that's why he can't get paid. But either way, man, I found your stream uh, randomly. I'm definitely, don't forget anybody who's watching right now on Coach Anthony, smash that like button. D- d- smash the like button. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't miss any of the updates. And if you feel so inclined, please donate a super chat. Support the sport of boxing. Be good or be good at it. All day, sweet baby Ray. Be good at it. I'm out. Keep in touch, baby. Thank you. Look at that, my man. My man. All day, man. Damn. All day. I got to keep up with you all day, man. You got this interview thing down to a science. He interviewed me on my own channel, man. That's, that's dope, man. My man, all day. He obviously is a boxing, boxing guy. Um, we went from talking about boxing routines to talking about the greats of the history. That's how these lives always go. And I always come in here with the intentions of just chopping it up for a little mi- few minutes. And the next thing you know, we're on here for over an hour. I want to say thank you to everybody who's in here, who spent time in here. And I ain't leaving yet. You guys have more than enough time to come chop it up with me. And we're going to continue to talk and we're going to continue to build and you know what I'm saying? That's what this is all about. That's what this channel is all about. Let me take a quick break. Guys, don't forget to go to the website, CoachAnthonyBox.com. That Black Friday sale still active. Let's What's go. going on, guys? Your boy, Coach Anthony. Of course, we got none other than Fast Eddie Chambers. And we just wanted to go ahead and remind you, this is Black Friday week. This is the week of Black Friday. And I just wanted to let you guys know what we are offering. I am offering every single course on my website that we already dropped up to date, which is 15 courses. And actually, I'm going to give you guys an extra course that we just made named Drillers Make Killers that isn't even released to the public yet. If you go ahead and grab the Master Boxing Bundle at 90% off, Eddie, 90% off. And not only that, I'm going to give you guys a free coaching call so we can go ahead and discuss what your personal goals are, what you're trying to accomplish through boxing, and how I can help you further in the future. Over the years, I've made courses like Build You From The Ground on 1.0. 
build you from the ground up 2.0, footwork drills, defensive principles 101, how to set traps and counter punch, angles and how to create them, 50 combos to the head, 50 combos to the body, 50 head body combinations, how to box on the inside, how to box from the outside, how to box the opposite stance, which is basically orthodox first southpaw, the complete Philly shell system, how to shadow box, heavy bag conditioning drills, and of course, like I mentioned before, the last course that isn't even released yet, Drillers Make Killers. Guys, this is a steal. I've sold these courses at $300 a pop, and many have purchased them in the past. And now you guys can get all of them at one time for 90% off with a coaching call. Guys, this is an opportunity. Do not miss it. Go ahead. Go to the website. Don't hesitate. You've been watching us on YouTube for years. We're here to help you. We want to take your boxing to the next level. Let's go. We still here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep the chat going. Let's keep the conversations going. Oh, and for the record, I'm still considering doing Discipline Decembers, y'all. Let me know. If you guys are watching this live, let me know if Discipline December sound like something you're interested in, man. We're going to motivate each other to, uh, you know, work out every day, stick to our diet every day, stick to our goals every day. The goal is to not wait till January to start on our goals, all right? Let's start on our goals ASAP. Let's start now. All right, but we're going to start in December technically, right? Because, of course, we got no days off November. It's still rocking out. You know what I mean? So we're going to finish up the no days off November. But if discipline December sound like something you're interested in, I'm probably going to end up doing a poll on my YouTube the way I did for this before I did. I'm not going to bring it out if you guys ain't going to be part of it. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. So let me know if that's something you guys are interested in. Obviously, today's live was focused on, um, you know, workouts and, and and trying to see how I can help you guys with your workouts. But, you also, but we also have to remember that the number one thing is accountability, right? Like, it doesn't matter what you know. It doesn't matter, you know, like Bruce Lee said, it doesn't matter. Your knowledge isn't enough. You need to apply it. So we need to apply it, hold each other accountable. If you guys are interested in disciplined Decembers, let it be known. Um, you know what I mean? And let me know. I like these monthly themed ideas. Sober October, no days off November. Now discipline December, di discipline December, December discipline. Okay, my man said, let's do it. Um, yeah, man. You know, listen. The goal is this, guys. I have a platform that obviously people come to. You know what I mean? And um, whether it's a few people or a lot of people, the people who are involved in it, the people who do want to be part of this community, part of this family that we're trying to build here is a, we got to try to be better every single day, right? Like that's the goal. The goal is, and we're going to spend time talking to each other. It should only be talking about a few things, right? How can we, be, how can we be better? You know what I'm saying? How can we motivate each other? You know what I mean? And that's the goal. And I bring to the table, what I bring to the table, obviously, is I bring Besides my social media platform, everything, I bring the knowledge that I have, you know, working with professional fighters for the last two decades, um, world championship corners, you know, all the stuff that I've learned over the years. And I'm here to share it with you guys. But also, it's always fun when you have people to do it, you know what I mean, who are willing to invest the energy, stay disciplined, stay committed. You know what I mean? So Discipline December is something that I thought of in the middle of no days off November. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe everybody would be interested. So I have a final answer for you probably on Wednesday. I'll give you guys like a two days notice if I'm going to do Discipline December. Um, it seems like a few people are already interested in it, but it has to be it has to be something you guys really want. You know what I mean? Or I'm just going to do Discipline December behind the scene by myself. You know what I mean? Been on here an hour and 24 minutes, guys. If you guys keep the chat going with some talking, we will continue. If not, you already know, man, tomorrow's another day.
All right, Joseph, my man says about to head out. I think I'm about to head out too, man. You guys are getting a little quiet, man. We've been on here for almost an hour and a half. So tomorrow, guys, I will be back. No days off. November continues. And oh, yeah, the sale is extended. Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday is literally right now. And um, how can I end the Black Friday sale when it's Cyber Monday, right? So the sale continues, guys. You guys still have an opportunity to go ahead, grab something off the website, get the 90% off, get the coaching call. I have not completed completely ended the sale yet. And for as long as you guys continue to um take advantage of this sale, will depend on how long I keep it extended. So right now, everything is going good. People are jumping on. I'm talking to new people every day. So as long as that continues, we'll keep the sale. As soon as that slows down and I see that you guys are the sales coming down. So anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for everybody who tuned in and I will see y'all tomorrow. What's going Peace. on, guys? Your boy, Coach Anthony. Of course, we got none other than Fast Eddie Chambers. And we just wanted to go ahead and remind you, this is Black Friday week. This is the week of Black Friday. And I just wanted to let you guys know what we are offering. I am offering every single course on my website that we already dropped up to date, which is 15 courses. And actually, I'm going to give you guys an extra course that we just made named Drillers Make Killers that isn't even released to the public yet. If you go ahead and grab the Master Boxing Bundle at 90% off, Eddie, 90% off. And not only that, I'm going to give you guys a free coaching call so we can go ahead and discuss what your personal goals are, what you're trying to accomplish through boxing, and how I can help you further in the future. Over the years, I've made courses like Build You From The Ground on 1.0. Build you from the ground up 2.0, footwork drills, defensive principles 101, how to set traps and counter punch, angles and how to create them, 50 combos to the head, 50 combos to the body, 50 head body combinations, how to box on the inside, how to box from the outside, how to box the opposite stance, which is basically orthodox first southpaw, the complete Philly shell system, how to shadow box, heavy bag conditioning drills and of course like i mentioned before the last course that isn't even released yet drillers make killers guys this is a steal i've sold these courses at 300 dollars a pop and many have purchased them in the past and now you guys can get all of them at one time for 90 percent off with a coaching call guys this is an opportunity do not miss it go ahead go to the website don't hesitate you've been watching us on youtube for years we're here to help you we want to take your boxing to the next level let's go